So when Pastor Key and I got married, he told me he wanted a marriage that would be a testimony. And I mean, I plan to get married and I plan to have an okay marriage, you know. So when I met him and he had this, he had this really strong resolve about it, that our marriage can be good. The one that really amazed me was when he said our marriage can be quarrel free. Ah, I said, me, we like quarrel pass fights. Our marriage can be quarrel free. So he said, go to the word, you know. And that's one of the things I absolutely adore about him, how he's so passionate about the word. He said, go to the word. Everywhere marriage is talked about, it is good. You know, marriage is good in all things. It's honorable in all things. My, uh, marriage, if he either finds a wife, finds a good thing. And I shared all of that on Friday. And over the years, I found out that there are so many benefits to being married and doing it right. And the truth is that you can do marriage right. I always tell people, marriage is not that deep. Oh. The way people make it seem as if marriage is hard work. Mar marriage is work, yeah. It's hard work, yes. But marriage is, is not as intense as some of us make it seem. You know, a lot of times people say, oh, I've seen bad marriages, so I don't want to get married. Or I've seen my parents quarrel, so I don't want to get married. And I always ask, is it just because you've seen a car in an accident that you now don't want to buy a car? No. There's nothing wrong with the car. It's possibly that the person was a bad driver. So it's the same way. There's nothing wrong with marriage. It's just that the two people in the marriage probably didn't do it right. And that's not enough to now say, oh, I don't want to get married. Have you been married before? You to go and try and see. But if you have knowledge, most times it's not marriage, bad marriage is not, a, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a love problem, to be honest. Because if you ask people that have been divorced, and sadly now, in this generation, and the way things are now, if you look around you, you will probably meet or know somebody that is going through a divorce or has been divorced. If you ask them, they can tell you that when they were getting married, they were in love. So that tells me that love is not the problem. Or at least the feeling of love, what people call love, the feeling of love, is never the problem. It's usually a knowledge problem. So a lot of people are getting married, but they don't know what marriage is about. They don't know what they need to do in marriage. They don't know what marriage requires of them. So they get married and end up struggling and making a mess of it. You know, Jesus, when they asked Jesus about marriage, he said not everyone will get married. He said some people, nobody's asking them. Some people, nobody's accepting them. He said some other people, their problem is that they don't have the grace or the aptitude for it. So there's a certain level of grace and aptitude that marriage requires. And Jesus says if you are capable of it, by all means, get married. So if Jesus is encouraging us to get married, knowing fully well that not everyone will get married, right? So that's one thing that some of us need to settle. So stop running from prophet to prophet, pillar to post. Some of you are not called to marry. <laughs> but he says if you have the opportunity, then do it well. And that's what I came to tell you this morning. That if you have the opportunity to get married, do it well because there are so many benefits to mar marriage. Okay, so I'll start with um, Psalm 128, the Passion Translation. You know, in the beginning, the Bible says that it's not good for man to be alone. And God said, I will make him a helper. I will make him a help meet. So a helper that is suitable, adaptable, and comparable to him. And the reason why God said that is that if I bring someone else to this man's life, there are benefits that he would never get if he were alone. There are things that he will experience as a married person, that as a single person, he will never, ever achieve it. Am I saying that marriage is by force? No. Marriage is not by force. Marriage is by choice. But if you choose marriage, I'm telling you that there are benefits to it if you do it right. So give me Psalm 128, the Passion Translation. Thank you. It says, a song of the stairway, how joyous are those who love the Lord and bow low before God, ready to obey him. Your reward will be prosperity, happiness, and well-being. It says, your wife will bless your heart and home. Your children will bring you joy as they gather around your table. It says, yes, this is God's generous reward for those who love him. Marriage is a reward. Having children is a reward. God says, your wife will bless. Like, there's a blessing that comes from being married. Even God himself says, if you love me, it's part of the rewards I give to you. 
So if God is rewarding you with something as beautiful as marriage, that should tell you that marriage is a beautiful thing. If God is saying, what I want you to reward you, usually when you do something for someone and somebody says, I want to reward you, you expect it to be a good thing, right? So if God is saying, I want to reward you, you expect it to be a good thing, right? Because the they know they reward you now. People have not collected reward before. Why are you looking at me like that? So when somebody says, I want to reward you, do you expect it to be a good thing or a bad thing? A good thing. So if God says, when you bless me, you, when you love me and you serve me, part of what I used to reward you is marriage and children. That should tell you that marriage is a good thing. If God himself is offering it to you, that is one of the things I want to give to you because you serve me. He says, it's a reward for you because you serve me. It's a reward for you because you obey me. And he says, I want to reward you, so let me give you marriage and give you children. That should tell you that marriage is a beautiful thing. It is what the world has made it. And this is why I keep shouting on social media. I'm not, I'm not there by chance. I'm there intentionally. Because when they come there and they put ring light, and they say all the things that they are saying, some children are picking it up and it's entering their spirit. We have to come out and counter it. You know why so many people believe that marriages are bad? It's because those of us with good marriages don't talk. We don't think it's worth talking about. So someone... His husband annoys her, she will go to social media and go and say it. And then all the young people are saying, oh, so that's how marriage is. Men are annoying. Men, that's where they start, men are scum, women are scum. Scum, scum. There are all, all kinds of negative things about marriage. It's flying around because the people who have bad marriages are more vocal than those of us who have happy marriages. Our marriage, no, they work. How is that possible? Look around you now. Look around you, there's still a lot of people who are married. And even if, even if statistics say, and I don't totally agree with that statistic because I don't know if that statistic is taken in the church. They say 50% of first marriages fail. That means that every time two people get married, one will fail. Now, we emphasize on the 50% that will fail. But we've also forgotten that 50% will succeed. So every time they bring out the statistics, your attention immediately goes to 50% will fail. As you mean, they brought it out and they said, 50% of all marriages will succeed. It gives you more hope to say, I am part of the 50% that will succeed. So the way that statistic has brought out, it has, you know, like I always say, Satan is, you see, the person you are playing with is not playing with you. Satan is not playing with you. You are the one playing with Satan. You are treating him like, oh, it's not Satan, it's a nuisance. No, Satan is your enemy. So he's working to get you and your children. It's not even after you, it's your children. If he can convince you marriage is bad, automatically he has convinced your children that marriage is bad. So Satan is very intentional, and I think we need to be more intentional. More Christians need to be vocal about how good their marriage is. We need to be more vocal about it. So when I go on social media, but somebody was saying it, that when they drag me, you drag, see, dragging is not your prerogative. If you drag me, me too, I can drag you. Everybody has a dragging right. <laughs> the social media is not your own. They say it's social media. So if you come and say your own, me too, I can come and say my own. If you are angry that I said my own, then that's your problem, not mine. But we must enter that, you know, set your face like a flint. See your own. Bring out your marriage. Put a picture of your husband. What's wrong with that? She's always putting it. He's paining you. I see they pain them. He go they sweet. Talk. You come back tomorrow, put two more pictures. This time, add your children. Because why must I conform to this world? If the world does not conform to me, they should leave it all. For me to conform to them, it's not happen. So Christians need to be more vocal. Marriage is a good thing. God says I will reward you with marriage and children. Then that means it's a good thing. The only thing is we need to do it right. So the real problem is how the knowledge and how we're doing marriage. So today I just want to share with you a few blessings of marriage. Ecclesiastes, 9, um, Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9 to 12. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. It says, two are better than one. Why? Because they have a good reward for their labor. Two are better than one. Just give me verse nine. 
two are better than one. So interestingly, this morning, when I was meditating about, you know, what I was going to minister this morning, the Holy Spirit just said to me, oh, let's do, let's make it fun. So let's make it an acronym for beautiful. So I'm going to share with you the benefits that make marriage a beautiful thing. And we're going to use the acronym beautiful. So B is better. Marriage makes you better. Marriage is your last chance to correct your bad character. <laughs> Everything God asks you to do as a single person, the exam is inside marriage. A soft answer turns a real world. You say, no, me. I like to say my mind. Anybody annoys me, I say it. I don't care. I give people a piece of my mind. I just talk anyhow. It's a marriage. Ah. If you do anyhow, you see anyhow. You don't talk anyhow in marriage. That's when you remember that a soft answer turns away wrath. Marriage is not even about being right. Sometimes God will say, apologize even when you are not right. See, that's in campaign. Ah. When I first got married, ah, you know that I've told you, I'm not really okay like that. It's Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, and Pastor K. Jesus that is helping me. So in marriage, you know, remember I said my husband said we can have a quarrel free marriage, but that thing is inside my body already. That before you look for my trouble, I've already planned how I will answer you. So I won't even wait for it to land. Do you understand? Hot. Before you offend, I answer you. So imagine coming with that mindset and saying, I want to do marriage. And then my husband says, no, we will not. Two of us cannot be mad at the same time. When somebody's angry, you know, the other person has to walk away. Hey? We had disagreements. And the only thing, at least one of the things that God has really helped me with is loyalty and the need to always keep my word. So when we agreed that we will not, you know, we will not quarrel, we will not have a, I did not know how much that would work on my character. So anytime I want to just, I'll just remember that, ah, we agreed I will not quarrel. So my mind will now work on what other way can we deal with this conflict? How can you have opposing views without being opponents? I will now start coming up with, so I will now go into the word, find scripture, find, then I will now remember, ah, soft answer turns I'll just, or the will say, go and apologize. I'll say, ah. I'm not wrong now. I do not offend. See, apology has nothing to do with being wrong or right. Go and be the bigger person. I say bigger person. Big pass me now. Make, you know, I had, honestly, I'm as, as, I'm as normal as you are. You know how they say Elijah was a man as you are. That's how I am. I cannot pretend that, oh, because I'm a pastor. No. It still pained me. But what it did for me, my marriage made me a better person. When I first got married, one of the challenges I also had was, I'm not, because I'm very introverted. I know people don't believe in that, but extremely, completely introverted. When I do my tests, I'm 100% introverted. That's my personality. Very shy, very, I don't, and I don't like people. I, I, I do better without people. So that's why social media works for me, because I'm actually looking at a screen. I'm not really connecting to people. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just, I like my space. When I put something, I don't want you to shift it. So when I, my pastor came, I was borderline OCD. Now I'm so scattered, I can't even believe it. When I, my, if he moves, if I put this thing like this and he moves, immediately I enter the room, something, my body will just not function. I can't function in chaos. Everything has to be organized. So, I, so every time, oh God, I can't even believe I'm that, I was that person. So every time Pastor K and I will maybe want to do something or we'll have a, you know, maybe have a conversation about something, his approach was always different. So um, as a pastor's wife, most people expect you to be warm and friendly and gentle and, you know, compassionate and all those things. Um, I was not. So when I come to church, I'll frown my face. I want to reveal one secret now. <laughs> in the <degree. laughs> so I don't know how many people see our videos if you see our videos then that's my normal face I'll just come out I'll just be frowning I'll just bouncing out so as I was, I was coming out Peter was coming out and I said mama smile fix your face before you come out <laughs> so I will enter church from my face walk from the back come and sit down in front I won't even turn I won't even turn to pastor's wife that will not ask somebody how are you how was your week all those things 
Because if I ask you I'm lying, I don't want to know, really. <laughs> and I'm not really that good at lying. If you don't like me, I'm not offended, though. Because me too, I probably don't like you. Do you understand? That's how it was. I'm telling you, marriage makes you better. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm not just trying to show you my weaknesses because I want to. That's how I was when I first got married. This was over 18 years ago. So I would come from the back. I would just march from, but okay, that two of us are walking. That time we couldn't hold on because if you hold on, you frustrate me. It will greet from the back. High five, chop knuckle, do this. Sir, so you're going to preach, focus. <laughs> like, I, you know, I'm going to preach, I'm meditating, I'm not smiling. What's funny? So I will march from the back, just come and sit down in front, especially if I'm preaching, I'm tense. I'm already thinking, God, how am I going to climb? What am I going to say? Hope I won't say something that is, you do not send me. Hope I will not talk more than my mouth. God, will I even meet? If there are questions people ask, will I answer it? Did I even meditate on that scripture? I'm thinking plenty things. Then I'll be greeting people. So I'll just march to the front, sit down. Immediately they end the grace. As David never lost a battle, so will God's work with you. I'm in the car to say my B. I just entered the car, sit down, wait for Pastor K. Pastor K will be there, oh, one hour. What's this man doing, God? What's this man doing? Let's be going home. I came with the brother, I'm married to the pastor, I'm not the church wife. <laughs> so one day, Pastor K came to knock at the window. I was in the car, he came, knocked. He said, this is not how pastor's wife used to do, come down. <laughs> I said, Shebi, when you were getting married, I told you I'm not pastor's wife material, you say you want to marry. What's all this? He said, calm down, calm down. It's not for me you are doing. If you're doing it for Jesus, calm down. You are a shepherd. You have not checked on the sheep. Oh, oh God. I will not calm down. I will not stand. <laughs> because for me to even go and meet someone, to greet them. Remember, I'm naturally very shy. So, and I don't like rejection. I will not go and greet you. Now squeeze your face one kind. I don't want. So I'll just stand where I am. He will not say, come out from there, come out from there. Go and ask, talk to people. Go and, you know, go and ask people. And so from then, I started, in fact, someone once said in church, they asked someone that, ah, is you, it's as if you don't like Pastor M. She said, how do you hug someone whose hands are like this? Uh, he said, oh, I didn't bother me. <laughs> That's what I'm even telling you. You see problem, you see. But now, I am such a lover. I'm such a hugger. I come into church. Before I get to the front, service might be halfway. Because I've greeted everybody. And I will remember what's going on in your life. So when I'm greeting you, how are you? It's not just how are you. I will remember how I met you, what we talked about, what's going on in your life. Do you have a job now? Where is your daughter? What's the last time I heard you, I say, that's how I am now. After service, Pastor K is in the car. <laughs> Go and call Pastor M, let's be going home. So marriage makes you a better person. This version of me, people say, oh, Pastor M is very sweet. It's not sweet anything. It's marriage that started removing. I used to be so judgmental. How can somebody say they are Christian and sin? How? When I got married, ah, Pastor K, not, there's nothing you can tell Pastor K, he will flinch. Tell him you killed 45 people, say, hey, who else knows about this? I say, well, I don't know, why are we, who else knows? <laughs> this person just kill somebody. He'll be tapping me like this. So I started watching him and I started learning. You know, the thing about marriage is that opposites attract. So God will direct you to someone who is different than you so that you can all their, funny enough, all your weaknesses will be their strength. So you can draw from them. So I started learning. Like when you tell me you kill somebody, I'll say, hey, but you know Jesus still loves you. So now that I've killed the person, how are we going to do it? Can we? Did you bury the person well at least? <laughs> so how we now help the family? Are you ready to go to prison? Is there a way we can? You know, I'm now a bit more em and I cannot say I learned this from any Bible school. I learned this from marriage, from watching someone else who is different. Pastor K is one of the people that I know that he, even if, and he learned a lot from me before people look at me like, what do you can bring for the marriage? <laughs> yes. He learned a lot from me. Pastor K I cannot apologize. If he offend you, just move, let's move on. You can't move on, sir. Apologize. <laughs> say sorry. And I'll make him say, that person is just looking for affection. So, we, we rub off on each other. The Bible says that iron sharpens iron. So marriage makes you better. So B is what? So marriage makes you better. E, give me Exodus 9.9. 9, the amplified version. It's God that helped me on this time. But I'll rush it now. So that means I'll cut out all my story. I'll just do Bible study. Exodus 9.9. 9. <laughs> Exodus 9.9. 9. I want amplified. 
I want amplified. Amplified, not amplified classic. Just amplified. Exercise 9-9. Just amplified. Choose you promised me I will have my scripture. Should I read it from my own Bible? Give me a second phone so I can read it myself. Okay. Sorry, I was really hoping that they would... Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, Exercise 9 9. Somebody has. Okay, it's fine. It says, Live joyfully with the wife whom you love all the days of your fleeting life, which he has given you under the sun, all the days of vanity and futility. For this is your reward in life and in your work in which you have labored under the sun. There's one version, I don't know if it's NIV, that says, enjoy your wife. So the E is enjoyment. Marriage is for enjoyment. God expects that you will enjoy each other. And you know, he says that you should enjoy or rejoice in the wife of your youth. So God is expecting that you will marry as a young person. The wife of, thank you, NIV. He says, enjoy life with your wife whom you love all the days of this meaningless life that God has given you under the sun. He says, all your meaningless days. For this is your lot in life and in your toilsome labor under the sun. God expects that you will enjoy each other. There's an enjoyment that marriage brings if you do it right. There's an enjoyment of the physical body. There's also an enjoyment of the mind. There's just, you know, there's pleasure in being together. Pleasure of being with the right person. If you are in love, you know that there's a... There's a way love makes you feel. When you see the person, you just be happy. You just be smiling for nothing. Everything you say, you know, as my husband said, somebody you say, ah, look, I love these flowers. <laughs> my wife loves flowers like this. Oh, I just saw three cockroaches. Oh, my husband likes cockroaches sometimes. <laughs> in fact, have you not seen people that are in love? Yeah. Everything that you say. Oh, that reminds me of when Kingsley just, ah, ah. we're talking about something else. Biology exam. What's concerning Kingsley is that biology exam? But that's just how it is. When you enjoy someone, you enjoy their company, you enjoy sex with them. You see, the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. That bond is talking about it. It's better for you to marry than to be, to be aching for sexual satisfaction. So you are 40 and you are still single. When you now marry to be the wife of your old age, do you now have power? <laughs> I don't know why they are laughing anyhow. Anybody that laughs anyhow. <laughs> Instead of you to pretend that it's not you I'm talking to. So it says, enjoy your wife. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. There's, let me tell you, eh, to be honest, there's an, you see those, you know, <laughs> there's an age eh, that marriage makes sense. So. I'm telling you. There's an age when you are young eh, and you get married. You get more have sex four times a day. Every day. But by the time 50, it's nearing. You'll be doing summer. When your wife is looking for you, you say, honey, I'm coming. I want to go and meditate. It's not meditate. It's tired. When you are young and you have children when you are young, it's, you know, it's not pension. They used to train children. When you are young, God expects that in that youth is when you enjoy marriage. And marriage brings a level of enjoyment that nothing else brings. Even the sleeping around that you are sleeping around. She be shame follows it now. When you finish, you'll not be ashamed. You can enjoy yourself without shame, without guilt. That's what God is saying. So B is what? E is what? A. Give me Amos 3 3. In fact, don't give me Amos 3 3. Give me Matthew 18, verse 19, New King James Version. Amos 3 3 says that two cannot work together except they be agreed. So, marriage, one of the benefits of marriage is agreement. One of the benefits of marriage. Matthew 18, 19, New King James says, Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. There's a power of agreement that marriage gives you that no other relationship does. He says, if two shall agree as touching anything, 
You know, when people get married, I always laugh when they are, they are fighting to win arguments. You should be fighting to win the agreement. Every time two of you stand in agreement on something, it will happen. I can give you so many examples in our marriage. We agreed we will not be poor. Because poverty wanted to kill us. I mean, I'm not used to poverty. I did not come from it. I did not. Poverty. I knew I, knew I could see my future. That money likes me. <laughs> if we're in a room, money comes here. It will come and look for me first. Yes, very respectful of me. Money. And it's not even Naira. Because me and Naira are not really friends like that. I just tolerate it. <laughs> Dollars. Uh, or pound sterling. You know the only currency with a surname? Very respectful of me. If he enters this room now, he will look for Mildred. Ask it. So we both agreed that we will not be poor. And in agreeing that, we also agreed on the steps to take to make sure. So when I'm saying agreement, it's not, oh dear, let's do agreement prayer. That's not all I'm talking about. When you agree on something, you must also agree on the things you need to do to get there. So we agreed we're going to have a quarrel for your marriage. We've been married for 19 years. We told my bad character, we're not once. Why? Because there was an agreement. There's so many things we agreed on before we got married. Before, when I met Pastor, I've shared my story here many times. When I met Pastor, okay, doctors told me I would never have children. When I told him, he came to meet me and said, oh, love, all this thing, I had the, the, the sugar sand in your spirit, something, something, all those things. Follow me, I'm going to take over the world. <laughs> I said, my brother, before you start saying all these things, let me tell you. Doctors say I will not have children, no. So before you start doing love, you now reach front, come and reverse. Let me tell you now. Do you know what he said to me? He said, number one, I'm not marrying you for children, but we will have our children. So if that's why you don't want to marry me, let's settle it now. Let's agree on how many, let's agree on their names. We named our children before we even started dating. Today we have three children without medical intervention. The power of agreement. Couples are fighting. I'm just laughing. You're fighting, wasting. Satan is you. You know why couples fight? It's only Satan that wins. Oh, you don't know that? Even, especially women that are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. The week they cry with their husband is their ovulation week. I counsel a lot of them. They'll call me. I've noticed a trend, ma. Every time it's my ovulation, me and my husband will be quarreling. Please, ma, pray. I say, what are we praying about? Is it not you that needs something? If your husband cry with you, say you can't, honey, you can't. Cry. You know how? <laughs> you know how when it's Valentine period, boyfriend is quarreling with girlfriend. And no matter what you do, the boy will not settle with you. That's the way you two should give yourself brain. I know that this is my ovulation week. Anything your husband says, you are a stupid fool. He says, I'm a stupid fool, baby. <laughs> he says, you are very annoying. I am so annoying. I'm so annoying. He's pulling his shirt. I'm an annoying. Why? You that you want something, you are quarreling. Let's make carry egg. No, they fight now. So you must be determined to keep the agreement. I don't get time. I'm going to clap, collect my time. <laughs> so we agreed. Agreed wealth. The things we are doing to the LDM, we agreed. We agreed that there will be a season of pastoring, but there will be a season where he will become more itinerant. We agreed. We'll travel all over the world. We agreed we'll do it together. We agreed on the sacrifices that we would need to make. You know how hard it is for a woman to leave her children as a following man? But it's our agreement. So B is what? E is what? A is what? Let me give you another benefit of marriage. You. Genesis 11 verse 6. New Living Translation. It says... Chisom, did you give them my scriptures? Thank you. It says, look, the people are united. And they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. One of the blessings of marriage is unity. If two of you are united, I'm not talking about agreement now. I'm saying if two of you are united, you are one. The Bible says you are no longer two, but you are one. Some other translations say the people is one. You say these people are united. There is nothing they imagine to do, nothing. You know, sometimes you have to read the Bible and really read it. How can God say nothing? He didn't say, oh, some things that they imagine to do will not be. He said, nothing they imagine to do will be impossible. So if two of you are united in your thoughts, in your heart, you are one person, you operate as one, 
You're not thinking, um, I'm my, she, this, I'm, this is my thing, this is my phone, this is my car. You're not thinking, you're not thinking as two different individuals anymore. This unit is talking about working at a level of covenant. When you start to operate at that level, there is nothing, I guarantee you, nothing you imagine to do that would be impossible. I can't count the number of times, but a woman tell me, oh honey, I want to do this thing. I don't want to say, okay, mm -mm. Say, mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't want that one. Anytime, he, he, had, he had been saying nothing to me for a long time before he really started sinking in. He said, anytime we're in agreement on something or we're, we're one, no, his words are, anytime we're one on something, it always happens. So I don't want that, it's okay. I want you to be in this. I'm talking about owning your marriage. I'm talking of you seeing the other person as you. So everything you want for yourself, you want it for that person. Unity. Say nothing they imagine to do will be impossible. You'll be one mind, one purpose, one spirit. Not fighting over irrelevant things. You're, in fact, you should be so unified. <laughs> you know, anytime they tell me something, my, maybe my mom says, I want to do this thing. They immediately know that I'm going to go and tell us, okay. If you tell me, oh, I want to tell you this, don't tell your husband. <laughs> Let's just say, hmm. Because... I cannot guarantee you. Because we are so, you know, there are times that <laughs> Pastor K is trying to keep secret from me. He will not just me the thing. <laughs> I will not say, oh, that's why you are doing this. Not like. <laughs> we have become so much one that even keeping secrets, secrets from each other is now hard. That's the level of unity God needs you to get to. That when somebody asks you something and they go and ask your husband, it will be the same thing that will come out of your mouth. There's nothing that you imagine to do that would be impossible. You're wasting unity. You're wasting it. How can you be married? You have a secret property. Your partner does not know. Then when something happens, God forbid, something happens to you, you will not start running around to gather money to pay school fees. Meanwhile, you have like 24 properties nobody knows about. So B is what? E is what? A is what? U is what? Unity. T, another benefit of marriage. Give me Genesis 2.25. And I need to run now. Genesis 2.25. It says that they were naked and they were not ashamed. T is transparency. God wants you to be in a marriage where you can be free to be yourself. Where you will not be judged. Where you will be comfortable to be yourself because you know that this person loves me and there's nothing I will do that will change how they feel about me. There's, there's nothing as beautiful as having that feeling on this earth. That no matter what I do, I get person will go get my back. And you know, we really love God for that. But you know you can have that experience. That's why sometimes they say marriage is heaven on earth, if you get it right. The same way you know that there's nothing you will do that God will back down. Except you don't truly know God. If you know God, you know that there's nothing. You can't have sin is love. All you need to do is just come back. He's waiting for you. It's like that, that prodigal son's father. That the boy was practicing, when I get home, I'm going to tell my father that while he was yet speaking on the road, his father ran to meet him. Removed, gave him ring, removed, gave him the best robe. That's how God is with us. And that's how your marriage should be. That no matter how you behave outside, you know that there's somebody that will tell you that thing you did outside is not good, but will defend you. So you live a life where there are no secrets and there is no shame. Give me First John 4, 18. First John 4, 18. First John 4, 18. 4, 4. It says, I think it was NLT, I want to read this. It says, love never brings fear. Just leave the TPT, don't worry. Just leave that one. I'm sorry, Miss if I should have opened Bible. You see all this new modern age. If we're carrying normal Bible now that I've marked, I will read it. Say, so love never brings fear. For fear is always related to punishment. But love's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts. Whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not reached love's perfection. This, this English, you know, NLT would have been perfect. Because it, it, it describes the fact that the only reason why you are afraid is that you, don't yet ex you have not yet experienced perfect love. Uh -huh. See it. 
Say such love has no fear. I'm talking about the love that you should have in marriage. It has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. Now, this is talking about our relationship with God, but you can also, the way Apostle Paul will say, oh, I, but I also speak about Christ and the church, but I'm speaking about marriage. You can also translate it. If you know that no matter what happens, this person will have my back, lying will not be an option in your marriage. So even when you are tempted, say, oh, that girl in my office, ah, I'm tempted. you go and tell your wife, that's the first way you know you will not cheat. Sin thrives in secrecy. Adultery happens because the man, when the team first started, he did not tell his wife. The first day it happened, he did not. A lot of things that became affairs, proper affairs, would have been one night stand. We we'll know that, oh, that's what we're dealing with. We'll forgive you. Yeah, let's be working on how we'll make it. But the man will say, I got this. And you know that when you say you got this, you don't got it. <laughs> they say, no, I got this. I wanted to just make sure that my, 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 I, I, I can fix this. I can fix it. You'll be fixing it and be going deeper. If you want to stop cheating on your wife, tell her. Just tell her. If you want to stop cheating on your husband, tell him. The only time I go to the gym, there's this guy. He's buff. Your husband say, come here. We'll buy weights here. Me too, I'm his trainer. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 15. Let's do three more reps. He himself will turn to trainer for you. Temptation, they will help you cut the temptation away. But the real problem is that we, we're not transparent. Marriage, marriage, a beautiful marriage gives you transparency. There's no need to lie. There's no need to be afraid. There's no need for sin. Transparency. So B is what? E is what? A is what? U is what? T is what? I. Intimacy. Exercise 4, 9 to 12. I need to rush. Exercise 4, 9 to 12. Give me 12. Let's just run to 12. 12. It talks about if you are, if one is, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, give me 11. Give me 11. Give me 11. I'm sorry. Okay. It says if two lie down together, they will keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? So intimacy. God expects that you will have intimacy in marriage. Someone will cover you. There's a closeness. It talks about physical intimacy, but it also talks about other forms of intimacy. There's spiritual intimacy. Your partner should be the person you are most vulnerable with. You can tell them anything, and they can agree with you. They can cover you. That's what intimacy is, where you are vulnerable enough to let another person into your soul, into your heart, into your deepest, darkest secrets and your deepest desires. So marriage brings intimacy. So B is what? I need you to remember it. E is what? A is what? U is what? T is what? I is what? F. F is friendship. F is friendship. You have a friend for life. Proverbs 27, verse 9 to 10, Passion Translation says, Sweet friendship refreshes the soul and awakens our hearts with joy. For good friends are like the anointing oil that yields the fragrant incense of God's presence. So it says, so never give up on a friend or abandon a friend of your father. For in the day of your brokenness, you won't have to run to a relative for help. A friend nearby is better than a relative far away. So when you have a friend in your home, that's what marriage gives you. Marriage gives you a friend. And you know the funny thing is that there are people, there are people that have been your friends for years. They are very annoying, but they are still your friend. Why are you guys still together? Because you are friends. You are friends. A lot of you are not friends with your partner. That's why what they are doing is paining you more than normal. Because that same thing, your friend will do it. You say, guy, that's the way you do. No, do I'm again. I don't like him. But if your wife does it, you all hell will break loose. You are a mistake. I regret the day I married you. In fact, the, oh, guy, waiting, I do what your friend never do. But it's because you are not friends. If someone's your friend, there's nothing they will do. You will say, you will wait. This friendship is better than see the thing. I'm the thing I'm gaining is more than what I'm going to lose. Though. So let me just stick with this person. That's what marriage gives you—a friend for life. You don't have to go far to look for a relative. There's someone in your house. Someone close by is better than a far relative. So one of the benefits of marriage is that it gives you friendship. It gives you a friend for life. It's only death that should be able to separate you guys. So what is B? What is E? What is A? What is U? What is T? What is I? What is F? 
we're almost done. Another you. Proverbs 18.22 tells us that he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor. So you is unlimited favor. That's one of the benefits of being married. Unlimited favor. When I met my husband, there were many things that he wanted to do. But I understood that coming into his life meant that I was carrying favor. It says you are a good thing. And he that finds you finds a good thing and obtains favor. So I expected favor to happen for us. So he didn't look at it like it at the beginning. But when I got married, there were things. And I came in with the, what do you want? Because I'm a favor carrier. So women, you need to know who you are. So the man, in fact, I remember when we were getting married, and he said, ah, you want to marry me that I don't have any money? I said, is it you that I'm looking at? A virtuous woman is a crown unto her husband. I'm a virtue carrier. If you find me, I'm a good thing. And when you find a good thing, you expect favor. So I know that favor will enter your life. You will never recover from marrying me. Is that a... <laughs> but if you know who you are, you unlock the favor and the grace that you carry. There are many men, if they are honest, when they got married, things changed for the better. A lot of things that you were struggling with before started happening. So I remember when I came, he wanted to write books. I came on and I said, what do you want? He told me all these dreams. And I started knocking them off one by one. And every time I stepped out and said, I'm going to do this thing, God just backed it up with favor. We want to be on TV. I knew a few people because I'd been on TV yeah, many years ago when I was still very young. I used to read news. So I was, I had friends in that sector. So I just started asking people, we need somebody on STV. I need a slot. One of my friends, Stanley, was there. I said, ah, Stan Lobo, I beg, I need slots. He said, ah, no slot. I said, you go find slots. Why you not go find slots? Now my husband, though. So he started, so you see, even the favors I had with people, I could pull on them and say, it's me you are doing this thing for. You say, I go pay better money. I say, forget your money, your own money, your commission, forget that more. This one, I'm my own, I'm you the drum for. You know, and those, that was how, because back then, <laughs> even paying that TV bill was Jesus. So I had to pull on every favor, chance everybody, chanceable, you know, and that's why it's good to be good. Because if you have been a blessing to people, you see, see, let me not start preaching about money because let's just stick. So you experience unlimited favors. You bring your grace, join with another person's grace, and things begin to move for you. So B is what? B is what? A is what? U is what? T is what? I is what? F is what? U is what? Uh, you are good students. Clap for yourself. <laughs> and finally... You experience love in all its varied forms. Love. I. The reason why you don't want to get married is that you've not experienced love. There's a way you experience love. Eh? You don't want to go back to your father's house. Eh? When he, I mean, when, when you know somebody loves you, someone is crazy about you, at the end of the day, when you people, maybe you guys go out, and then they are maybe taking you. I remember those days when Pastor <laughs> okay, is taking me to go and drop me. I will be like, why am I dropping you? I say, that, that's the problem. Because you have not married me. You have to drop me for my father and suspend your love and come and pick me tomorrow again. That's, so that, 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 you know, and when I say love, I'm not just talking feeling of love. I'm talking about intentional love. You would know that there's someone who is always kind to you. Someone who is patient with you. With all my bad character, I'm the best human being in this world to, to Pastor K. You can't tell him anything bad about me. He will tell you, oh, no, she was, was it off day? Was it inside my mind? I said, no, be off day, now off behavior. <laughs> but it's okay. He will defend. Ah, and sometimes I'll talk to you something, and just say, you know, you're a fine girl, Sha. There's a way. You have a, your own hype master living with you. Even if you are not feeling good about yourself, they will make you feel good about yourself. You, he doesn't keep any record of wrong, no matter what I do. He was telling me one day, say, there's nothing you can do that can end this marriage. I said, are you sure? You see, I'm telling you, nothing. There's nothing as beautiful as being secure in someone's love. And that's what marriage is supposed to do for you. That even if the whole world is against you, you have somebody that when you come back, you can lay your head on their chest and you are fine. You know that somebody has got me. No matter what happens, I know that I'm going to be happy. I know that somebody is looking out for my good. I know that no matter what I do, the person is just thinking, mm, it's an off day. I can help her be better. I can help her be stronger. I can help her. And the person is always looking out for your good. So like I said, when I first got married, I was not really one of those people that um, wanted to. I didn't want anything but to just be behind the scenes. And Pascal would tell me, no. I don't want you behind me. I want you beside me. I say, all this love talk. It's good, shall Oh, smile. Oh, oh, all those things. But I didn't think 
that he really meant it, you know. But over the years, over the years, I've seen that everything he's doing is always for my good. Every time he wants to do something, he's always thinking about, ah, so no, I need you to do this. I'm thinking, I want to write your books. And we're always trying to outdo each other. That's the beauty of love. If both of you are in love, you want to bless each other. You are, they are fighting to bless each other. So I remember, and I'll end with this story. I remember one, one time, my, my PA, um, Chisong, when she first started working with me and moved in, she was living with me at the time. So one of those days, she said, Pastor Kay and I food. And we always try to outdo each other, in, in the, even in the little things. We're always trying to, oh, no, I love you more. No, you love me more. What was those things that annoy people? So, <laughs> so she brought food, and we were eating, right? So we're eating, and then there was one piece of meat left. So Basque said, oh, baby, do you want it? I said, no, you can have it. And he said, no, you can have it. I said, no, I mean it. You can have it. No, seriously, baby, you can have it. No. She some just said, please, can I have it? <laughs> because relationship people. Uh-uh. Which ones you can have it, you can have it, you can have it. Can I just have it so that this matter we end? <laughs> and then we really realize that truly this is what we do. Not just with food, but we do it with each other's lives. Oh, no, honey, I don't want you to do this. Oh, no, it's okay, I can make the sacrifice. Oh, no, 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 honey, don't. That's how marriage should be. Where you know that this person is always looking out for you. So finally, B is what? E is what? A is what? U is what? T is what? I is what? F is what? U is what? L is what? And with these few points of mine, I hope I've been able to convince you and not to confuse you that being married is a beautiful thing. Were you blessed this morning? Celebrate Jesus.